Hello everyone and welcome once again to Scorpion Cigar Reviews. Today I will be reviewing the Camacho. Now people have been calling this the Scorpion line. Um, all I've done is change the packaging the way I understand it. This is the Corojo. It's a uh, Corojo binder uh, in the um, Maduro wrapper. Let's do a closer look here. And that is why people have been referring to these as Scorpion. Now these come in your various uh, blends. Um, this particular one, uh, as I mentioned, is the Corojo. And there will be future reviews of some of the other blends. Now I'm told, and I have this on, um, it comes from a reliable source, we'll say that. I'm told that it's the same blend as the original Camacho line, um, just different packaging. However, I was also led to believe, although I couldn't swear because no one's actually come out and directly said this, although it's the same blend, I'm led to believe that the tobaccos, or some of them, either come from a different farm or perhaps it's just a different harvest. Uh, where the line that everyone's familiar with, uh, evidently they've, oh, oh, for example, they've used up all of the tobacco they had in storage, and now this is um, the newly harvested uh, blend. I don't know. That's just the impression that I get. And I'm told that uh, when you smoke this one side by side with the original, that they're quite different. And I actually intend to do that. Uh, I will smoke the... Uh, the new Scorpion line today, and perhaps tomorrow or the next day, not sure yet, I'll smoke one of the originals. I'll compare my notes, and uh, we'll see just how different they really are. So look for an upcoming uh, review where they're uh, compared, and uh, we'll see what happens from there. So, with that, the, uh, the scent There's some wet hay, some fresh tobacco. Okay, that's about it. I'm getting on the nose. Some cocoa, some bread, a little bit of spice. else in there. I'm not, I'm not quite sure what it is. Okay, well this uh, 5x50 Robusto Cigar has a very nice looking wrapper. It's uh, a nice firm pack. Triple cap. Has a very supple feeling outer wrapper. Smooth, silky, almost oily feeling. It's just It just feels really, really nice. A uh, fairly decent weight, maybe a, a slight bit light on the weight for what I would think a, a well-packed cigar would be, but you know, it's, I guess it's within range. Very minimal veining, uh, and the seams are tight, and they almost completely disappear. So uh, normally, what I would do with a well, maybe I'll go ahead and do it anyway. I was trying to decide whether to uh, take the band off ahead of time or not, but. Um, a rather large band it's about half the size of the cigar so uh, maybe I'll leave it on for a while and uh, then I'll take it off in a little bit no unusual tastes or superb or otherwise uh, on the wrapper just uh, what you'd expect now today I'm going to be using a rather inexpensive V cutter. I do use this from time to time, however, not real often. So the blade's still nice and sharp. And it's stuck in there. There we go. Very free draw. Very spicy. Uh, like the, the cedar spice, there's a lot of 
various kitchen spices in there. Um, I generally refer to this as uh, um, chili spices, like chili powder spices. Maybe a little taco seasoning. Mm. Hint of leather. A little bit of white pepper. Mm. This promises to be very nice. I'm trying out yet another type of lighter. It's a, a single torch jet lighter. Very inexpensive. It cost me two dollars at uh, one of those, and I will not name it. One of those stores where most items are five dollars or less. However, they do occasionally carry some higher end stuff at a much discounted, at a highly discounted price. So here we go. Let's get uh, toasted. Right off the bat, a very dry, very powerful smoke comes off this. Pretty big hit of pepper. There's an underlying taste that I've, to date, not been able to describe. Something else coming through. Hmm. Not sure what this other... Flavor is almost reminds me of a uh, like gyro, but maybe a burnt gyro. Some other things going on. Very potent. Very strong. Just a ton of pepper. Say on the retro hill, it's still burning my nose. I'm getting some some burning leaves, like like when you're burning leaves and you kind of get the smoke and the taste of that in your mouth. I'm getting that, not necessarily a bad thing. It's uh, there's it just has that character to it. In all the videos I've done and all the reviews I've done, be it you know a paper review or a video review, I can honestly say this is the first time I've picked up burning leaves. I don't think I've ever had burning leaves before. You see there's just a ton of smoke coming off this. I'm, I'm outside. Not a whole lot of wind. You see the smoke is blowing away a little bit, but lots of smoke. The draw is delivering just huge amounts of smoke. Some other underlying flavors in there, but it seems to be kind of bound up in there, so uh, we'll give it a chance to warm up a little bit and flavors to open up a little bit, and I'll be back somewhere in the first third. I'll be pairing today's cigar with Ruination IPA, it's an India 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 Pale Ale. I'm not going to do this a third time. Ruination India Pale Ale. It's from Stone Brewing Company. It's a micro brew. Uh -huh. Where did I put my... There it is. I'm not doing too good here. Uh, anyway, uh, you know, they have their little sayings on the back. Uh, you know, they give a definition of Ruination. Uh, the act of ruining or conditioning of being ruined, a severe state of damage, destruction achieved by wrecking. And then they go on to explain their company and, you know, blah, 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 and all this. And then on the cap it says, in the beer world, Stone's creations are famous. San Diego Union Tribune quoted that. Anywho, go and remove this top. Unfortunately, it is not a twist cap, and the cap is on really well. Occasionally, you can take a non-twist cap and pull it off with your hands, but... Anyway, uh, I'm using... It's not really a 
a beer tasting glass, but it's pretty close. It's actually a uh, proper water glass. I've been using these to taste my beers. Maybe one day I'll buy a proper beer tasting glass like I bought proper whiskey tasting glass. So we'll see what happens. There you have it. It has a nice, oh, a good inch or so head on there. Nice color. Kind of, uh, I don't know, kind of a soft orange. Kind of reminds me of a pumpkin color. Very floral. Nice nose. Very floral on the taste, too. It's definitely has, has a very India Pale Ale character to it. A little bit of bitterness on the finish. A little bit of citrus. Very, almost fruity. Not, uh, you know, any particular fruit, but just that character that you get the refreshing fresh fruit kind of thing. So, we'll uh, set that now for a moment and we'll get back to our cigar review. See you in a bit. We are just about 30 minutes in, almost. Got, uh, now on the long side, I've got uh, an inch and a quarter or so of ash. And you can see it's burning a little bit uneven. However, I don't see any need to touch it up. Ash looks like it's starting to mushroom on the top a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and give it a little flick, and actually it's holding on really well. However, I've forced it to crack. Oh boy, I took quite a bit of effort to get that off. Should have just left the darn thing. Anyway, okay, this thing's really mellowed down after the initial lighting. That that blast of really strong, really forward pepper is completely gone. Um, the smoke is no longer dry either. It's uh, smooth and, and almost silky. Almost creamy. Feels really good in the mouth. Picking up some creamy flavors. A little bit of leather. Earth. Mineral. Slight hint of pepper on the retrohale. Not so much that that's the nuance that you're getting, but it's the feel that I'm getting. I feel a sneeze coming on from it, but we'll see what happens. Well, I tell you, you know, from the initial lighting, when this sucker was about as full strength as you could get, this thing is really mellowed down to oh, medium, maybe a medium minus at the lightest, but uh, far cry from the initial lighting, I tell you. Also, the, uh, the pre-draw was just wide open. It was like a wind tunnel. However, it's tightened up a little bit. Just about perfect. Boy, that's good. Maybe some Cajun spice in there. Like something you would get from um, maybe a jambalaya or like a shrimp etouffee, something along those lines, but not not as hot, spicy, just the flavors. Has some stronger spice on the back of the palate. Uh, not really spice like a 
like a pepper, not black pepper, but a hot pepper, a fresh hot pepper. One of those red chilies or something, maybe. Now, I'll tell you, I did smoke one of the original Camacho Corojos a couple days ago. It was a, um, wasn't a Robusto, probably a Corona size or something. I don't remember exactly what the size was. It, if I had to guess, I would say it was a Corona. And that, from what I remember, uh, was uh, you know, worlds apart from this. So I'll get uh, somewhere in the second, third, and uh, on break, I'll sure I'm sure I'll go ahead and remove this label, um, and I'll be back. The Ruination IPA. The head's gone down considerably after just you know, a few minutes. It has a kind of a orange cake scent on the nose. It's very pleasant. Maybe a almost an orange creamsicle. A little bit floral still, but the floral characters really died down. Real pleasant. There's a very full body feel in the mouth. Not thick and syrupy. I've had some beers that were almost syrupy in the mouth. But this is definitely full bodied. And part of that is due to when you take it in the mouth, it's like the head reforms in your mouth. It just explodes and expands. Which is really nice because it it really opens it up, fills all the taste buds, all the senses in the mouth just get hit one at a time, but yet in rapid succession. So you're really getting all the flavors in one quick little burst, just real quick one after another. They're opening up before they dissipate, so you're getting a little bit of everything. And they're all there at the same time, and then they slowly fade. Has a nice finish, almost, almost smoky in character, just, just barely smoky. But I tell you, if you could retrohale a beer like you do a cigar, you'd really pick something up, I'm sure. So I'll set that down and come back to it in a little bit, and we'll get back to our cigar review in just a moment. All right, we're approaching the one-hour mark. Well into the second third here. Uh, I did try to ash it once. The uh, the ash had split. And you see right there where a chunk of it's missing. It had split and kind of flared out to either side. And uh, with some considerable effort, I was able to get a smaller portion of the split to come off. Now, I've yet to get the rest of the ash to come off. I gave it some good effort. It wouldn't come off, so it's a very tight holding ash. The burn has almost completely corrected itself. You see the ash is kind of loose and trying to split again. I'm going to try to flick that off again. Man, some effort and it came off. So here we are in the second third. Cigar is really mellowed out. It's still probably on the low end of medium body. Low end of medium strength as well. So they're kind of going hand in hand. The body and strength are going hand in hand. I don't know if I mentioned it earlier. Uh, yeah, I did. I did the V-cut. I did mention that. As you can see, the, a V-cut gives it a, a fairly decent opening. Larger opening than a punch cut would, but 
perhaps not quite as large of an opening as using a uh, double guillotine or something along those lines. The smoke is remaining silky, almost creamy. There's a bit of moisture to the smoke. Not, not like you're drawing on a moist cigar or a wet cigar. It's just the, the smoke isn't leaving me dry and parched and that kind of thing. So, real pleasant on the smoke. Starting to soften up ever so slightly. Still... Really, it's fairly firm, but from, uh, you know, before I ever lit the cigar, it was almost hard as a rock. Not at all brittle, just really hard. And uh, it's definitely softened up a little bit. The retro hail is seeing more of the black pepper again. other flavors in there but it's hard to say what they are they're just they're really good but I can't discern what they are some mineral in there maybe a hint of metallic minerals darn mosquitoes flying around me I've lit my my torch is trying to drive the mosquitoes away and doesn't seem to be working. There's almost no wind. So where the torches are, it's, I'm sure there's no mosquitoes over there, but didn't want to bring the torches too close and affect the flavors of the cigar at all. Starting to get a little dark in this corner. Turn on some lights, but I may have to turn on some more to light up this corner a little bit. So I'll, I'll do that before I come back in the final third. So uh, I'll keep on going. I'll see you in a little bit. Here we are in the final third. Still burning a little bit unevenly, but once again, not needing any touch-ups. It hasn't tried to go out or anything. The ash has been holding on phenomenally. Still a, a low end of medium on the body and the strength. And some leather with hints of uh, licorice and a little bit of meatiness in there. Kind of peppery on the retro hail with a long finish on the retro hail of pepper and a long finish of a Cajun spice uh, something along the lines of an etouffee mid and um, mid and rear palate real nice cigar Picking up more of those uh, metallic type minerals. Not quite a pencil lead, but kind of along those lines. The smoke has almost a leathery scent to it. When I when I inhale, I tend to at the same time take a, a light whiff through the nose coming in. And I'm picking up a little bit of leather across the olfactory nerves coming in. So it's kind of a reverse retrohale. Yeah, it's real pleasant. A little bit of uh, leather in there still. Just now starting to go a little wonky on me here. See right there, it's not, not burning right there. I'll give it a minute. It, it seems to be correcting itself. If it doesn't, then uh, I'll touch it up. All right, 
I'll be back in the nub. See you in a bit. Here we are about an hour and 20 minutes in. I'm into the nub. I did go ahead and correct the burn on it. Still picking up those Cajun spices. Some mineral, some earth. Slight hint of leather. A little bit of meatiness in there. Picked up the meatiness uh, late in the final third, just before it got into the nub. I will continue this cigar on until it starts burning the hell out of my fingers. This is a really good cigar. Um, they range uh, between six and seven dollars for this cigar, and the robusto size. As far as the uh, Stone Brewing Company's uh, Ruination IPA, really went really well with the cigar, complemented it nicely. Let me tell you something about this, uh, the packaging on this. The bottle has almost a, uh, a kind of a golden silvery kind of label on it and it's etched into the glass. It's not just a paper label. It's uh, etched on there. Real nice looking label. I mean everything on it's etched. The, the front label, the back label, that it has kind of the story of Stone Brewing Company on it. And uh, has this little devilishly looking guy. I don't know if you can see that. There it is. On the neck, front and back. The etched label, as well as the wording on the back, is etched. Real nice packaging. These are kind of expensive. They come in a four pack. And they run. Uh, it was right around twelve dollars, I think, just under, just under twelve dollars. So you're looking at almost three dollars a bottle. So it's not you know totally ridiculous in price, but that's uh, you know, typical of your micro brew. Price-wise, so I will say that the Camacho Scorpion line, Corojo, it has been a really nice cigar. Corojo filler and binder with a Maduro wrapper. Really enjoyed this. The ash on this, I'd almost be willing to bet it would hold on all the way into and perhaps through the nub if you're real careful. Really solid, tight ash. The scars put out everything from uh, the initial lighting with just a real strong blast of pepper. Quickly mellowed out. There were some uh, burnt leaves, some burnt euro meat. Uh, as it mellowed out, the smoke became very smooth and silky with creamy flavors. Mellowed down to a medium body and strength. Picking up a little bit of black pepper on the retro hail. Creamy, moist smoke with some minerals, some metallic minerals. Hints of leather and some other dis undiscernible flavors. Cajun spices, something along the lines of jambalaya, etouffee, that kind of thing. Some hints of leather, licorice, a little bit of meatiness. Long peppery finish on the retro hail. Long finish, mid and rear palate of that etouffee. Really nice cigar. So uh, I will, uh, as I said, in a day or two, uh, I'll review the original Camacho line. But I thank you for once again watching Scorpion Cigar Reviews. Catch you next time.